We're going to be covering the Nicholas Cruz trial that's due to start later this month um, on my channel um, and a little bit on Edward's channel too. Um, so I wanted to bring everybody kind of up to date and um, just give you a brief overview. The Sun Sentinel wrote an editorial that I'm going to read to you. Up here on the screen over on the left is Howard Feinkelstein. He is the lead um, defense attorney. In the center is Judge Scherer, Elizabeth Scherer. She is going to be the judge in the case. And on the right is um, Michael Satz, who Sherry used to work for, which is strange. But anyways, he is the lead prosecutor. He wants the death penalty. He will not compromise in any way. Um, the defense has already offered 34 life sentences without parole in exchange for pleading guilty but taking the death penalty off the table, and Michael Satz will not go for that. Um, also, the defense wants more time to prepare for the case and Judge Scherer won't give them more time. So he's creating a long list of things for appeal. Anyways, let me read this article to you. Um, it's actually an editorial that the Sun Sentinel wrote. Um, here we go. Nothing in local memory compares to the Parkland massacre, the massive case against the killer Nicholas Cruz and the emotional toll that preparations for this trial already are taking on survivors. His conviction is inevitable. He is offered to plead guilty if the state will waive the death penalty, but state attorney Michael Satz insists on a trial because he wants Cruz sentenced to death. Is such a trial worth it? We think not. Consider the victims who would be required to testify. There are 84 present or former students among the 435 people whom the state has named as major witnesses. 17 of those children were wounded in the attack that killed 14 of their classmates and three teachers at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in February 2018. Defense attorneys who are legally and ethically required to interview every potential state witness concede that the process is painful. Sometimes we have to stop because the witness gets upset, says Melissa McNeil, Cruz's lead assistant public defender. We have postponed or suspended depositions in the middle because a witness cannot continue. We were actually told this week by a student's mother that if we depose her daughter, her daughter would kill herself. Lawyers are asking the court to excuse one of the children from appearing in response to the public defender's subpoena. For now, the Sun Sentinel is choosing not to print her name. The lawyers explain that the girl has been treated for significant distress, anxiety, post-traumatic stress disorder, and other mental health issues, and will suffer a regression in any progress she has made if she has to relive the events during a deposition. Public defender Howard Finkelstein is sympathetic but isn't prepared to agree to the request. We believe what she is saying, that she is traumatized and will be further traumatized by going forward with a deposition or trial, he wrote in an email. We are, however, required in a death penalty case to depose all A witnesses, which she is. Many of the children who are witnesses are similarly traumatized and will be further traumatized by depositions, let alone having to testify at trial. In short, it is really up to the state. If they refuse to release the witness from testifying, the law requires us to depose her. That strongly implies that Sats would excuse her. Will he? We are very sympathetic to the trauma that surviving victims and witnesses are experiencing, and we think it is more appropriate that we file our response in court, said his spokeswoman, Paula McMahon. The potential student witnesses and hundreds of classmates went through hell on February 14, 2018. Those who survived hid in terror as crews stalked the halls, firing at least 180 rounds from an AR-15 style rifle. Some watched classmates die or had to step over their shattered bodies as they fled the carnage. For many, the trauma didn't end then. These were teenagers. Even well-trained combat troops suffer post-traumatic stress. If the trial goes on as scheduled, every witness, including many or all of these children, will have to retell the horror once again. Satz is pursuing Cruz's execution with the tenacity of fictional Captain Ahab hunting his nemesis, the white whale Moby Dick. That leaves the defense no choice but to prepare for a full bore trial. Finkelstein says he cannot be ready by January when the circuit court judge Elizabeth Scherer intends to begin jury selection. Should she reconsider? 
Such a trial is without question something that should be done only once. That means doing it right. There must be nothing to cause a state or federal appeals court to order a new trial, prolonging disclosure for years, if not decades. Postponing the trial to summer when Finkelstein says he would be ready would benefit students, particularly those in college who would not have to miss classes. It takes four years and one month on average to bring a murder case to trial in Broward County. Finkelstein says Scherer is allowing them only 23 months. Finkelstein is already building a record of issues on which to appeal. Scherer's denial of the defense's motion for more time to prepare is a potentially big one. Scherer denied a defense motion to disqualify herself over some other pretrial issues and her background as one of Sat's assistant prosecutors. An expected motion for a change of venue, if denied, would be another issue on appeal. Seating an unbiased jury here in Broward County may well prove impossible. The shooting in Parkland has had mass media coverage in Broward ever since. In addition to the criminal charges, it has been the central issue in Governor Ron DeSantis' suspension of Sheriff Scott Israel, as well as the controversies over the performance of school superintendent Robert Runcie and subordinates at Stoneman Douglas. Parkland students began a crusade for gun control winning a new reforms in Tallahassee and taking their campaign national as March for Our Lives. Selecting an unbiased local jury may be impossible, considering not only the notoriety, but the anticipated stress of the jurors and the long and emotional trial over the mass murder of children. It is almost certain that the trial will need to be moved to a locale such as Orlando or the Tampa Bay area that has not been so perversely involved. The case also is a titanic struggle between two legal lions at the end of their careers. Satz and Finkelstein are not seeking re-election. For Satz, sending Cruz to death row is the ultimate duty in an office that he has held since 1976. He wants it completed before he retires in January 2021. Finkelstein, who was elected public defender in 2004 after serving as an assistant, is just as passionate. But unlike Sats, legal ethics and case law offer him no discretion. If the state attorney refuses to accept his plea bargain, he must go to trial <clears throat> with an all-out defense if that's what his client wants. At last report, the defense had yet to make had yet to take depositions from more than half of the state's witnesses, and there were two million pages of documents to review. If he isn't given more time, Finkelstein said, "You are basically asking the appellate court to reverse this." Some student depositions, he said, have shed light on Cruz having been bullied, an issue that would figure in an argument against the death penalty. Each and every one of these issues serve as a potential legal block to carrying out an execution if the state gets a death sentence from the jury, Finkelstein said. It is why the appellate process is so long and arduous and connects the victim's families to the trauma for up to a decade up to two decades, ending this case immediately with 34 consecutive life sentences without parole and without appeal may be in everybody's best interest. We understand why some of the victims' families don't agree. Their suffering is indescribable and deserves respect. They want the shooter held accountable with his life for what he denied to their loved ones, their lives in their eyes, as in sats, if Cruz's crimes don't warrant the death penalty, what does? But death sentences are fewer and harder to get in Florida since the law was changed in 2017 to require that the juries must vote unanimously, not just for convictions, but for the ultimate penalty. There are serious questions about Cruz's mental state when he assaulted the campus where he had been barred. He was a 19-year-old with a documented record of problems at school and at home. With just one holdout juror, 34 life sentences without parole would be the required outcome. All the effort, expense, and renewed trauma to the victims is trying to put Cruz to death would have gone for nothing. So we will keep you updated on the case as the trial nears closer, and we can discuss this in the chat, what everybody thinks. Um, I think they're wasting taxpayer money by pushing this to trial because I don't think they're going to get unanimous jurors every single one of them has to vote for the death penalty and there's a lot of stuff against this kid i mean he had visits to his house from the police there's mountains of records that i've read from mental health officials um you know throughout his life 